Hello guys and welcome to Economics with Ellie. I'm Ellie, that's me, and we are going to finally start on Economics 1B, the monetary sector. So this is specifically for UNISA X1601, but it's a general macroeconomics introduction. Okay, we're going to start with the demand for money. First off, uh, I want you to realize that you don't have to understand why we're doing this just yet. Just bear with me, go through the modules. At the end of the course, it'll make a lot of sense. So the demand for money. This is not about how much cash you want, okay? We all want cash, okay? It's not about that kind of demand for money. This is about the bigger picture of how much money is around, okay? So there's two reasons to keep money, or well, two ways to keep it. The one is demand for active balances, and the other one is demand for passive, passive balances. Okay, the two different ones the active balance depends on income, okay? It depends on income levels, which we write with a Y. The passive demand for money, so let's make a demand for cash, is it depends on the interest rate, okay? The interest rate percentage. So the demand for money, number one, is about the active balance or the demand for active balances which is also the transaction demand for money. Transaction demand. Or there's also a second one, the passive demand for money, which depends on the interest rate, which is the speculative demand for money. Money, money. Okay, so that's just a little bit of theory for us to get into it. The demand for money depends on two things. It demand, it's depends on the transaction demand for money, which is the demand for active balances, which depends on income level. It's also the demand for passive balances, which is the speculative demand for money, which depends on the interest rate. So that you can just memorize, you don't have to worry too much about understanding it. That does not work very effectively. Let's try this one. There we go, much better. All right, now we are going to do the graph that depicts the demand for money. Economics is full of graphs. You should know that by now because you've done the first half of it. Uh, this graph that we're going to work with quite often has interest rate over here and money over there. Now money, we said we have the demand for active balances and we have the demand for passive balances. Now the active one is liquid one and the passive one is liquid two. When you think about why it's L or why it's liquid. Liquid as in, think of a glass of water. Okay, it's very liquid, you can just drink it. Um, they say money is very liquid because you can use it in a transaction immediately, you can spend it immediately. Well, if you're holding an asset, like a house, it takes a much longer time to sell the house to get the cash. So if you're hungry and you have cash in your pocket, you can go to the shops and you can buy food. So that money is very liquid. Whereas if you have assets like a house and you're hungry, you have to first sell the house and that takes three months and that helps you booger all with your hunger. So money is very liquid, liquid, and that's why they depict it with an L, liquid. Now we said the first one, the active balance, does not depend on interest. Do you remember what we said it depends on? It depends on why, on income level. Before, because the first demand for money is not related to the interest rate at all, it's just a straight line down that says this is the demand for L1 and it depends on the income level. Okay, What this says is if the interest rate goes up, the demand, so this point over here, M1, will not change. So whether it's the interest rate is there or there or there or there, this line stays right here and has nothing to do with interest rate. But there is a second one which is also the demand for passive balances, which depends on the interest rate. Now, there's an inverse relationship, inverse I'm going to draw like this, between interest rate and the demand for money. Inverse means if we have two points, so let's say the first point is quite, it's like, hmm, this one has to be low, then this one is high, so there's our first point. And if this one is high, then this one is low, so there's our second point, and this gives us the demand. 
So it's an inverse relationship because you have your two lines, right? You've got your y and your x. And there's the zero. So when this one goes bigger, it goes up. On that line, this one, as this one goes bigger, so it moves that way. This one goes lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. Yeah, so if this one goes down, this one goes up. So it's an inverse relationship. So what you just need to know is that if the interest rate goes up, if the interest rate goes up, the demand for the passive balances goes down because they are inversely, inversely related. We're going to speak about the reason for that just now. It's called opportunity cost, but we'll get there. Okay, let's have a look at this graph. We now have the demand for L2 and the demand for L1. If we want the total demand for money, total demand, uh, in any point on this curve, so let's take these two points that I've drawn. This is the demand for the L2, which is this one, the passive one that depends on interest rate. We have to plus the M1 to it. So it's this amount plus that amount, Dunk, M1, and it'll put it there. Same over there. The demand for the total demand for money is that one plus that one. That gives us the total demand. So there we have the L2, but we have to plus this one over here. Dunk. There. And that's the total. So if we connect these dots, it makes a second curve. And this curve is the total demand for money, so it's L1 plus L2. Okay, it's a little bit all over the show, but there you have it. We have our demand for passive balances or speculative reason for holding money, active or transactional reason for having money, and if we plus this curve with this curve, if we plus them together, it's moving that dot there and that dot there, which gives us this curve, which is the total demand for money. All right. Now I'm going to talk about bonds, so let me erase all of this nonsense and talk about opportunity cost for money. All right, now why, so we said the demand for money, the demand for money, which is L1 plus L2, depends on the income level for Y and the interest rate for L2. But what does the interest rate have to do with the demand for money? So that's what we're going to look at now. What does the interest rate have to do with the demand for money? Now the answer is it's all about opportunity cost. If you have cash in your pocket, okay, cash, cash in pocket, that is for this one for transactional reasons but you could also keep money for speculative reasons which is this one your demand for keeping money for speculative reasons depends on what else you could do with the money and in this case we are going to call it buying a bond okay an interest bearing bond what this is is in economics in this sec in this specific course we are going to pretend that when you hold cash in the bank, you get zero, zero interest. Okay, so that's an assumption we make. So if you're holding cash in the bank, which is not true, of course you can go to Capitec, and really I can say that, go to Capitec and open a savings account and save your money. It's a, okay, so that aside, in this module, we're pretending that cash, even cash in the bank, has zero interest. Where you can get interest in a bond. The higher the interest rate, the higher the interest rate, the more of your money you'll put into this section over here. If the interest rate goes down, the more you'll have over there. So it's all about whether you're going to put your money into a bond or into cash. They are both very liquid, that's why we're using the two, and we are saying that the opportunity cost for holding money is the interest rate, the interest you could get on a bond. 
So all you need to know, just simplify it for yourself, it makes it easier. All you need to know is there's an inverse relationship between the interest rate and the cash you're going to hold. If your money is in the bond over here, the higher the interest rate, the more money you're going to put in here, which means the less the demand for L2. Say that again. If your interest rate goes up, you're going to get more interest when you put your money here with the bond, which means you're going to have less money there, which means that your demand for L2 will go down if the interest rate, this is a percentage by the way, goes Great, uh, I think that's enough for now and we'll do more in the next video. Good luck and uh, yeah, cheers. Here's to Economics 1B. Let's do this.